to buy or not to buy? That is the question. Welcome back to another edition of Bourbon Kingdom. I'm David. And I'm Zach. And today we are going to talk you through... I swear, do not do that voice. <laughs> We're going to talk you through to buy or not to buy. Thank you. Uh, these right, just right. different bourbons. We, uh, we, we may do this segment every once in a while just to kind of give you a heads up of, of things that have either come out or have been out or maybe even not available, but you see it randomly on a shelf somewhere and you should, whether you should buy it or not buy it. So that's a great point. And what Dave was saying, if you all like this type of video, we'll do these videos yeah. every so often, not all the time. Right. You know, maybe a couple of times a year. Yeah. Um, all right, so first one up to bat, Kentucky Spirit. All right, so Dave, do you have thoughts on Kentucky Spirit? Why on a rant? Uh, I don't really have thoughts on it. I've had it once or twice. Okay, this is the best Kentucky Spirit I own. I own a few. These were the donuts from back in the day, blah, blah, blah. I don't think a Kentucky Spirit is worth it at all. To me, it's a pass. This is the best one I own. It tastes like a sweet tea. This is my stay or staying alive bottle uh, number one from the Silver Dollar, by the way. Again, this is the best one I own, and I bought it. I really like Silver Dollar, so I always want to support them whenever I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just overall, they're not my favorite. Yeah, and I think there's a lot more misses. I mean, mine are over there, so you just grab one of them. I mean, you can have an opinion about mine as well. I know. I'm just saying, just no. I like I told you, I've only had that a couple of times. I don't really um, have an opinion too much. Like if I'm drinking anything that looks like that bottle remotely, <laughs> it's rare breed. It better be rare breed. Yeah, it's I rare agree. breed. Uh, yeah. This one is uh, Woodenville. Uh, it's the ninety proof. It's the ninety proof. Uh, I I don't really have much to say other Pot than still. I. I I don't really have much to say other than this would be a hard pass for me. Um, it's underwhelming in every sense mm -hmm. of the word, and I just don't enjoy it at all. And people have asked us about, like, I've, I've had people ask me, like, what do you think about Woodenville? Yep, and, I, the same. and I just go. I So I, I agree. I bought it. This is my bottle. I tried it. Yeah. I bought this about a year and a half, two years ago, probably around the time we started the channel. Yeah. I've had about that much out of it. This is a bottle that I reapproach every so often. Because yeah. you, you want to think that it's going to change. Well, here, here's what I've been told. The cast strength one, I've been told it's great. Yeah. I've never seen cast strength. I have not Wouldn't either. Be. No. I've seen the finished, the rye, and like the 90 proof. I think yeah. it's a rye. I've only ever bought this because I don't. If I don't like the first thing I buy, that's it's, like the base offering. I'm not going to buy the. Yeah, finish. it's hard. To, it's hard to go back to like. It and makes you not want to go to the other things. I, that I would agree. Yeah, and it's not. It's like it's super peanutty and mm -hmm. woody to me. I just I didn't enjoy it at all. Yeah, I yeah. just it, it was a it, it was just one of those that was past. But there's a lot of hype behind the brand. Yeah, a lot of people do enjoy it. Yeah, but it's definitely not our. Cup of tea. Nope, definitely not. All right. I don't know why we get asked so much about this bottle, but we really do. The New Riff Six Year Malted Rye. Dave, uh, we have done a review over this bottle. I'm but trying to remember what we thought about it. You liked it. I didn't like it, Dave. I thought you liked it. I loved it. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> all right, just don't get me wrong. I thought you liked it. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good for but I didn't I don't I, I don't remember loving it, but I remember liking it. I think I think But I haven't had it since we reviewed it, so barely missed Glens are over there. Yeah, uh, they're too far away. Too far away. This barely missed our top twenty for their first year, I think. I think this was like right on like the borderline, like maybe like top four yeah. of the bottles that barely missed. This is fantastic. This is the best thing that New Riff makes. I, I'll I'll argue it right now. I've had the single barrel that people have argued is like it's like a really short barrel. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, hard to get and everything else. That is good. Yes, I, I agree with that. Outside of that, this thing is amazing. And 
it's supposed to be an everyday shelfer. They I do said, remember that. They said, you know, it's going to take a minute, but it'll be an everyday shelfer for everywhere. And once this is, in my opinion, this will be one of the best everyday ryes, even though it's a malted rye, that you can get without yeah. question. Yeah. This is, without question, this is a buy for me. I, I remember enjoying it. I don't remember loving it to the extent that you loved it, mm -hmm. but I remember enjoying it. But that was back, you know, I feel like my rye palate has expanded since we tried this. Oh, yeah. And so I might like it a little bit more than I liked it before. True. Um, and if we were true bourbon people, we would have Glenn sitting around here that I could try this. But we it's too far away. <laughs> I don't want to get out of the camera shot. So I'm going to take his word for it and just go... When it's an everyday chauffeur, you should buy that for sure. Do you just want to go get a glam and try it? No, no. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I do not. Um, uh, grab me this yeah, one. This yeah, one. That one. That one's fine. Um, if you've watched our channel at all, we don't talk about Starlight very much. But we talk about them every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And it usually has to do with the cigar blend. Yeah. Um, I liked their honey barrel finish. You love their yep. honey barrel. I did love their honey barrel finish. You're obsessive over their um, honey barrel. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. Their double oaked, I really, really enjoy. Uh, there's not much that I don't enjoy from Starlight. Their, their straight bourbons, I tend to stay away from. Mm -hmm. um, I like their finished stuff or their double oaked and things like that. Um, but this one is, this one's fantastic. Um, and if you can get your hand, I don't know where Starlight finds themselves selling or not selling. I know here in Kentucky, obviously in Indiana, mm -hmm. um, I don't know where else they are, but, um, if you ever come across a Starlight double oaked, um, do yourself a favor and get it. Cause I think it's really good. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy, but at the same time, like, as much as I love their funky finishes that they do. Yeah, they do. They're finished. Their rye finishes. I've had, like, three of their double oaks now. I don't like that. No, I actually enjoy this. So, you, you know, did. for me, it's a, it, you could, you could pick it up because it's generally pretty affordable. Like, yeah. like, they are not breaking the bank. Like, to me, I put them and Nulu on the same level in the sense of the type of distillery the distillers oh, I, are. I, now, time out. I think that I like Star my personal opinion. I like Starlight more than New no. I do too. But what I'm saying on I put them in the same category of like type of distillery, well, like they're a crafted, smaller, yeah, craft. they're smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would always I would pick Starlight over Nulu all day okay. long. That's, no, that's what fair. I'm saying. I'm yeah. just saying from a level standpoint. And Nulu, their their stuff is thirty to forty dollars more. Like. So I had Nulu's Honey Barrel Finish, and I had Starlight's Honey Barrel Finish. Starlight's was 65. Mm -hmm. Honey Barrel's was 130. Oh, I think, didn't like Total Wine have it like 150? Whatever, it was, it was crazy, it, it was crazy I, expensive. I and the Starlight one was much better. So yeah, uh, I prefer Starlight over any. So maybe we're just talking, if you can pick up Starlight, pick up Starlight. Take a chance on them. Yeah. Generally. Unless it's Double Oak. I like Double Oak. <laughs> All right, so my next one, and this one kind of, uh, I, you know, Joseph A. Magnus Murray Club. All right. Everybody knows, I've been watching the channel, huge Cigar Blend fan. Just absolutely huge. <clears throat> well, let's see two of them back there right now. There's three. Um, so one's on the ground. Oh, okay. Here's the thing, though, about Joseph A. Magnus. Their Cigar Blends... I love even the newer ones that aren't quite to the standard of the older ones because yeah. I just think that has like you know newer MGP. No, yeah. not saying their single barrels tend to be great because it was all MGP from back in the day. I'm trying to be a glutton for punishment. We should have just had Glenn's here so I could try all the bad. bad. I mean, they're literally like right over there. We now we're back since Dave went and got Glenn's because now Dave's like you know bourbon curious about everything. <laughs> I am so him. Murray Club. And, which, by the way, you've had all of these on here at some point in time. Probably so, you but I don't, don't remember, remember trying any of them. So, Murray Club. It's... Oh, I forget what it's finished in. Or what type of... I I can't even remember now at this point. Uh, but... it It's such a pretty bottle. And I was so oh. excited about it. And then I had that reaction over there. Holy... 
I don't. It's yes, like two hundred bucks too. Buy it. <laughs> buy it. <laughs> yeah, buy it. No, I'm just kidding. No. Uh, don't buy that. No, it's terrible, oh, oh and it's goodness. upsetting because like this is supposed to be like a higher part of their line. Blah blah blah, and it's just bad. And I just hate. I hate like same thing with like wild turkey. Like I hate not liking stuff of companies that I really like. And yeah, that's bad. Just. I know. It That's just, not good at it's all. It's a pass. Yeah, it's I a get hard it. pass. Yeah, for I sure. I get it. This one should be fun. Yeah. Oh, the end of the whistle pig. Um, 15 year. 15 year. Um, now, a, now, we took this as a whole. I think you have to take whistle pig as a whole. Yeah. And now, you did not like this bottle. <laughs> Tried it. Didn't like this one. Don't like the six year. Yeah. Don't like. I have not met a whistle pig that I like, and I've not had the Boss Hog. I've not had any of that. You haven't had the Piggy Bank. I have not had. I'd the, love to try the Piggy Bank. I won't lie. I'd like. I mean, listen. I'm willing to try these things, but That's every true. single time I try whistle Long pig, time I buy it. every time I try whistle pig, I want to punt it across the room. So here's the thing about whistle pig with me. I don't dislike whistle pig. You dislike whistle pig. I do. You don't like it. Fair. Fine. Here's my issue with Whistle Pig. It's so freaking expensive. Like the Boss Hogs, like there's a lot of them out there. Like a lot of their, there's a lot of them out there. I think it's actually pretty good. But you got to spend five hundred dollars to have that. You're spending five hundred dollars on Whistle Pig. That's, no, I'm not. <laughs> that's probably the majority of everybody's like collection. Like that's the most expensive bottle you have. Yes. And you're saying that out loud while it's like. Whistle pigs, most expensive bottle I own. Like that's ridiculous. It's it gonna be, be in our. It's gonna be in our unicorn list. <laughs> no, but yeah. anyways, that's my problem with whistle pig. That's why I tell people most of the time the six year. It's not great, but it's. I think it's made to be a cocktail kind of mixer. It needs to be mixed with something like yeah. toilet water and flushed <laughs> as it goes down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're on one day. Uh, this is what you get whenever Dave doesn't get a nap. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's true. I need a nap. That's true. So, but the reason why I pass on Whistle Pig isn't because the quality of the of the juice. It's literally the price of it, in my opinion. It's, it's both. It's both. Yeah, yeah. It's both. That's fair. All right. Hand me the new rip. See, this is what happened. Dave gets Glenn's. I now he just wants to try everything. Well, I want to walk back this to this thing that you said is great. I think it is great. All right, next. Ooh, is this backwards? No, it's not. Yeah, kind of. All right, Blanton's Gold. I so there's a lot of like you know which Blanton's is the best. Is you know most people say straight from the barrel because that's the highest proof one. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I think Blanton's Gold is the best one. That's my favorite. I know they're all single barrels, so I know they can all differ. But out of all the Blanton's I've ever owned or tried, uh, I got a sample from a guy. A guy and I we traded some samples. And he's like, "Do you guys try this Blanton's Gold?" He's like, "It's wild," and it was. It was so freaking good. And this one's not the same one, but I think this one by far beats straight from the barrel a normal Blanton's. All that kind of stuff. And I think Blanton's Gold are worth it compared. I would almost rather have a Blanton's Gold than a Blanton straight from the barrel. I think Blanton straight from the barrel typically is over oaked and I think can at times be a little bit hot. You know, now we can debate on the price of it, but if you're wanting to if you're wanting to buy one of these, I think they're worth it. Yeah. I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good for sure. What do you think of that new riff, by the way? Uh it's as good as I remembered it being. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that. I'm, I'm, I do like it. I still don't love it, but I like it. Is it a buyer pass? No, I would buy that. Because yeah. what is it? Probably 65, 70 bucks? Uh, I think it's like 60. Yeah, 60, Some, somewhere 65. in there. All right, last one. All right. And Dave picked this one. We know that it's not really being sold anymore. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be discontinued. Discontinued. But I'll be honest with you. The Sour Mash and... Again, if you know me and you've watched our channel at all, you know I like um, sour mash stuff like Michter sour mash, straight sour mash, their toasted sour mash. You know, yeah, uh, it's it's all good to me. This one, this Bell Meat is sneaky good, and 
Uh, I haven't seen it in a while, uh, apparently, because it is discontinued. Didn't know it. I don't care. If you find this somewhere, uh, it's really enjoyable. It's a really easy drinker, really smooth. Um, I just, I like it. And now that I know it's discontinued, I have about this much left at my house in one. I will probably nurse that. Dave's just going to take my bottle home. And then I'll probably take his bottle home. That's probably true. So uh, I really enjoy Bell Mead. uh, But anyways... So, we never, we don't always agree on everything. Well, you know, some of us know good bourbon. Some, yeah, of, us some of us just know crappy bourbon, and it's okay. That's <laughs> the way I am. Oh, I assume you were saying that to me. <laughs> Anyways. I know my limitations. Let us know what we got right, what we got wrong. For sure. Leave a comment, leave a like, hit the subscribe button. And until next time. We'll see you. See you.